Welcome to the new section guys, basic charts and shapes. D3 provides an extensive set of helper functions that we can use to easily create more complex visualizations. In this section, we're going to create these data visualizations based on data from the US Census Bureau. Without further ado, let's get started with the first visualization, the donuts and pie charts. In this video, we'll create an alternative visualization using animated donut chart. In September 2016, the US Census Bureau released data that showed how long American firms have been in business. The US Census Bureau even created a nice looking visualization themselves. This link shows the results from that data. Take a look. While creating donut charts, we'll learn to use path generators and color interpolators from D3. You can see this sample for yourself. By selecting a different group of firm owners in the top left, you can see the donut transition to a new state. And if you hover with the mouse over a donut segment, it'll grow a bit and show you its percentage in the middle of the donut. To start off, let's see what the data looks like in its raw form. You can get a CSV file of the data from this link. Just hit the download button and click OK. The result is a CSV file that has lots of interesting information in it. If you open it though, it doesn't really look like an easy to use data file. A single data row looks like this. So we'll sanitize the data a bit before we start processing it with D3. Since we're already working with JavaScript and we've installed Node.js earlier, let's write a simple script that filters our data. We're not interested in the data for a specific industry sector. So we'll filter out all the rows that don't have the value total for all sectors set to Y. Next, we'll filter out the columns that aren't interesting for us. We use this simple Node.js script for that. What happens in this script is that we use the FS read file API of Node.js to read the file we downloaded from the file system and then use D3 to parse the CSV file. After parsing, we filter out the elements we don't want and use map to convert each element to a simple one. Finally, we use the fs write file API call to output the converted data as a CSV again using the d3.csv format function. The result of this is that now we have a very clean and easy to understand CSV to process in our visualization. With this data, we can now very easily select specific groups to visualize by just filtering on the sex, ethnic group, race group, and vet group properties. Moving on to creating the donut. To create the visualization, there will be lots of steps involved, but as you'll see, most will follow the same principles we've already learned previously. The first thing we do is load the data. Here, we change the labels indicating how long a firm has been in business. We do this because the default labels are a bit long, and shorter labels look better in the final visualization. As you can see, we use the standard D3 CSV to load the data and change the row years in business label field of each row. Once the data is loaded, we call the update circle function. We'll now look at the drop down we can use to select a specific group to show. The drop down is just the standard select HTML element, which is added to the HTML file. With just this code, nothing will happen when we select one of the entries in the drop down. We still need to connect this drop down to our JavaScript. We do this directly using D3. We select the select element and use the on function to add an event listener. Now, whenever the value of the dropdown changes, the update function will be called, which is defined here. In this update function, we just call the update circle function with the value of the dropdown. As we'll see later, this will cause the donut to be redrawn with a different set of data. At this point, we've loaded the data and added the HTML select dropdown element. Now we'll set up the chart, some additional helper objects, and draw the gray donut you see when the page initially loads. Like we did in the other samples, first set up the chart. Nothing new here, except the last line where we set up the colors we want to assign to the segment of the donut. 
For this, we use another standard D3 API call, d3.interpolate reds. This function returns a red color based on the provided input. D3 interpolate reds 0 returns the value at the left. D3 interpolate reds 0 0.5 returns the value at the center. And D3 interpolate reds 1 the value at the right. Besides the D3 interpolate reds function, D3 provides a large number of color scales you can use. It comes with these ranges out of the box. But if you include the D3 scale chromatic module from this link, you get a large number of additional colors that you can use. Take a look at these colors. These two show a sequential set of colors. If you want to use a specific color scheme, for example, a fixed set of colors, you can also use D3 for that. When you use the D3 scalar chromatic module, you get these standard color schemes. To use these color schemes, you need to create your scale in a slightly different way. With a scale quantize function, the input range is mapped to an array of values. Now, going back to the code. The setup we need to do before connecting the loaded data to arc segments is setting up the gray donut you see when the first data is loaded. For this, we use the d3 arc function. The d3 arc function isn't an SVG element we can add to the page, but it is a generator. A generator is a function that, when called, returns a path string that we can then add to a path element. In this case, the generator allows us to create donut or pie segments as SVG paths that we can add. We use this bit to create a full donut. Note that we also could have specified these two properties when we called D3 arc to create the generator. Lastly, let's add some CSS for this arc and a nice border around the main container with the help of this code. We have our basic setup, which at this point looks like this. Not very exciting yet, so let's add the colored segments that make up the donut. We start with individual donut segments. We've seen that we call the update circle function when the data is loaded, or when we selected something else in our dropdown. In this part, we'll see how, based on the selected item, we update or add new donut segments and animate the changes. Let's start and collect the data we want to show. Replace this function with this highlighted code snippet. Here we pass the data we loaded from the CSV file through a filter loaded data filter, which filters out the data specified by the to show argument. We won't show the implementation of the filter data function since it is just plain JavaScript. We also calculate the total number of firms for this group that needs to be shown, which we'll use later on to calculate the percentage that we show in the center of the donut when you hover the mouse over a segment of the donut. The interesting part in the code is the d3pi function. Previously, we saw the d3arc function, which allows us to create a single donut segment. The d3pi function allows us to generate start angle, end angle, and padding angle based on the provided data, which we can then pass to d3 arc function. The d3pi function also can sort the data by passing in a function to sort. We use null for no sorting. The d3pi function needs a numeric value to determine the angles. Since our data is an object, we use the value function to return the count property of our data. This will help the d3pi function return the correct angles. After defining the pi, we use it by passing in our filtered data, as shown here. We simply provide the code to select the item based on the classification. The cool thing about the d3pi function is that we can now bind the arcs variable and use that to create our individual donut segments. Before we start animating them, we'll first just add them normally with this code. Nothing new here, we just select all the elements with the class.arc and bind the configuration arcs generated by d3pi function using the data function. To render a donut segment, we create a path element. 
set the fill based on the color interpolator we saw earlier, and generate the D attribute, which represents the SVG path. By calling the arc function, this is called with each of the elements from the generated arcs array. The result is a set of donut segments, like this. Now let's see what we need to change to animate the donut segments instead of just specifying the D attribute directly. First I'll show the code, and then explain the various parts. Replace this part with a transition call, and add these lines of code. This is the transition call we added. A transition manages the animation from one state to another. So, in our case, it allows us to transition the size of a donut segment. When you create a transition, you can also specify the ease function. An easing function defines how a value transitions from the start to the end value. If you specify D3 linear, the value will follow a linear path. With D3 ease elastic in out, it will bounce at the beginning and the end of the transition. And D3 offers a large set of other transitions. A very easy way to see what is possible is by using the Easing Explorer at this link. Let's look a bit closer at the code that defines the transition for our donut segments. We're creating a new transition that is executed whenever the arc elements are created or updated. In this transition, we use the D3E circle easing function. It will take two seconds and change the D attribute using a custom interpolator function tween arcs. The reason why we need a custom interpolator is because we need to calculate a new D value, the SVG path that draws our donor segment based on the old value and the new value. If we just wanted to change a simple value, we could have used the ATTR function. For our example, what we need to return is an interpolator that can interpolate the start angle and the end angle, and, based on these values, return a new SVG path that we can assign to the D attribute. As you can see, our tween arcs function takes the new data value D and uses that to create an interpolator with the get arc interpolator function. This function uses the D3 interpolate function to create an interpolator that interpolates the start angle and the end angle. Note that we explicitly keep track of the previous value by storing that in the old value property on the element itself, that is, this. We don't directly return the interpolator created by the get arc interpolator function, but convert the result from the interpolator to a SVG path by calling the arc interpolator function. With this setup, we've got an interpolator that returns the correct SVG paths for our D attribute. Now that we've got the basic arcs rendered, we can add some additional information that explains what this donut represents. So our next step is to add text legends. To add the text legends, we only need a couple of lines of JavaScript. Here we use the standard D3 approach of selecting elements, binding data arcs, which are the results of the D3Py function call, and adding or updating elements. For the labels, we add a text element and use the text function to set the label based on the input data. Remember, the original data that we passed into the D3Py function to generate the arcs array can be accessed through the data property. To position the labels, we once again use a transition with the same properties as the one we used for the donut segments. This time, however, we use the attr tween function on the transform attribute to position the labels. We also use a style tween function for the text anchor style. The text anchor style is used to determine whether the text is anchored to the start, the middle, or the end of its position. We use this to make sure the text anchor property is set to start for the text labels on the right side of the donut and to end for the ones on the left side. The interpolators used for this are shown here. As you can see, this looks very similar to the interpolator we used for the donut segments. The main change is that we use a different arc function. We use the labels arc function to position the text at the center of an invisible donut 
that is a bit larger than defined for the normal donut. We position the text at the center of each invisible donut segment using the centroid function to determine that position. For the text anchor style, we just check whether we're on the right or left side of the donut and either return, start or end. The labels arc function is here. With this code in place, we get animated text labels that move together with the donut segments. Now, all that is left to do is add the lines pointing from the center of each donut segment to the start of the text elements. For the lines, we once again follow the same principle. We add the lines and use an attr tween function to determine how to draw the lines at each step of the animation. The interesting stuff happens in the tween lines function. What we do here is we use the d3 line function to draw a line from the center of the donut, arc centroid, to the position of the text, labels arc centroid. To make it look better, we add an additional corner just before the text. The final step we're going to take is add some interactivity to the donut. If you open the example in your browser and hover your mouse over one of the donut segments, it pops out a little and shows a percentage representing the donut segment share. Adding mouse events is very straightforward in D3. In this code, we use the on mouse over function D and on mouse out function D parameters to add behavior to our donut. The code specified in the provided function is executed whenever that specific event occurs. In the mouse over case, we slightly change the radius of the donut segment to simulate the pop out effect and add a percentage text element in the center. In the mouse out case, we reset the donut segment to its original size and remove the text. So finally, here's our donut chart for America's entrepreneurs and how long have their firms been in business. You can shortlist it to see a specific group, say male owners, and hover over a specific part to see the details. Now we've got our final donuts, which animates and responds to changes in the menu.